Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer this morning, June 9th. This morning morning prayer is coming from our youngest daughter's room as I'm working from home today, but TELUS is doing some fiber optic line installation. So everywhere else in the house, it's banging, shaking and rattling. And this seems to be the quietest cave I can find. So if you're wondering where I am, that's where I am. So thank you for joining me this morning. This morning, we are going to be remembering Columba, who was the abbot of Iona, and he was a missionary and died on this day in the year 597. Let us take a moment to pray our hearts for morning prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Our opening sentence is taken from a book called Adonan's Life of Columba, and the sentence they have chosen to be our opening sentence reads, Columba sailed away from Ireland to Britain, wishing to be a pilgrim for Christ. Friends, O oh worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at God's hands, to set forth God's most worthy praise, to hear God's most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as for the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of thy heavenly grace. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to, con to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfaithfully believe his holy gospel. Wherefore we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together, let us pray the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, 
and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My friends, praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before the Lord's presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in the Lord with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills are God's also. The sea is God and God made it and God's hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of the Lord's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Today's appointed psalm is a portion of Psalm 89. All the readings today I will read from the NRSV translation. So a portion of Psalm 89. I have found my servant David. With my holy oil I have anointed him. My hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, You are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forevermore. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our first lesson today, the Epistle lesson, is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, beginning in the third chapter. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Now if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, the work of each builder will become visible, for the day will disclose it, because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each has done. If what has been built on the foundation survives, the builder will receive a reward. If the work is burnt up, the builder will suffer loss. The builder will be saved, but only as through fire. Do you not know that you are God's temple, and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. Do not deceive yourselves. If you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast about human leaders, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world of, or life or death or the present or the future, all belong to you. And you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. Here endeth our epistle lesson. Let us pray. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. 
the noble army of martyrs praise thee, the Holy Church, throughout all the world, doth acknowledge thee the Father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ, thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have we trusted. Let us never be confounded. Our second lesson this morning is taken from the 10th chapter of the Gospel, according to St. Luke. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. Jesus said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Here endeth the lesson. So today we learn about Columba. Columba was a mighty abbot in sixth century. Let's start that again. Columba was a mighty abbot in sixth century Ireland, who ruled a network of monasteries in his native land and helped to lay the foundation of the Christian Church in Scotland. Born into the clan O'Neill, Columba lived at a time when the Druids, the priests of Celtic paganism, still held sway. He became known as someone whose Christian holiness allowed him to command the magic of the Druids and to bend it to the will of Christ. Then, at the age of 42, he left Ireland in order to become, as a later biographer said, a pilgrim for Christ. He and 12 disciples settled on Iona, a small island off the western coast of Scotland. By becoming a pilgrim for Christ, Columba meant to set a more perfect course for his inward voyage with the Lord, that is, to enter more deeply into the life of prayer and penance. But he was committed to helping others become pilgrims of Christ too. So from Iona, he founded several new monasteries in Scotland. Missionary work was a byproduct of these foundations. The still pagan Scots were greatly impressed by the austere life of the Irish monks and even more by Columba's own powers. His disciples seized the opportunity and began to preach the gospel. Before long, many Scottish tribes were converted to Christ. Columba himself made a few journeys into the Scottish mainland, and he seems to have had a hand in converting at least one important chieftain. As a result, Columba came to be regarded as the Apostle of Scotland, and that is how we remember him today which is the traditional anniversary of his death, June 9th, in the year 597. So today we remember Columba. Let us together confess our faith in the words of the Creed, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. I invite you to assume whatever posture you find most prayerful for the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all people, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen and to all that are put in authority under her that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray the collect of the day. O God, you girded your servant Columba with the cincture of holiness and made him a pilgrim for Christ in the midst of the Irish and Scottish peoples. Grant that, having his life and labors in remembrance, we may rest upon your love and be cheerful in all adversities as we await the redemption of all things in your well-beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Almighty God, who has built thy church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the head cornerstone, grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their doctrine that we may be made a holy temple acceptable unto thee, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. My friends, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
rest upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for joining me for morning prayer this morning. Hope you have a wonderful day.